Star Wars 7x7 episode 1908. Today, the Hope series continues. Today, we are looking at the manifestation of hope as it appears in Return of the Jedi. Punch it! Hey Rebel Rouser, I'm Alan Voivod and this is Star Wars 7x7. Thank you so much for joining me for this episode where we are continuing our series, a 10-part weekly series focusing on the nature of hope and how it shows up in the Star Wars movies. Today, of course, we are on part three, which is Return of the Jedi, the movie released in 1983, which concludes the original trilogy, a trilogy that is, in its way, all about hope. And this movie does kind of have a special place in my heart. It is not necessarily my favorite movie. That would be Empire because I love the entire opening act of Empire from soup to nuts. Everything about it is just awesome to me. But <laughs> there is a special place for me with Return of the Jedi. And I will explain why after the break, which is coming up later. But for now, for the start of it, I want to talk about a couple of things in relation to hope as it shows up in Return of the Jedi. So when we start off, things are at their comparatively lowest point because of where we left things at the end of The Empire Strikes Back. The Rebellion has been scattered, Han Solo is in Carbonite and has been delivered to the gangster Jabba the Hutt, Luke has been defeated at the hands of Darth Vader, they are in hiding, licking their wounds, it is a really bad situation. Now, I'm going to digress briefly, but there is a point to this digression, and talk about a gentleman named Robert McKee who wrote the book Story. It is probably one of the seminal books on screenwriting, and he conducts workshops and seminars on the notion of how to structure a screenplay all over the world, and all of the philosophies that go into creating screenplays and all that stuff. One of the things that he talks about is for a movie to be effective and to have an emotional impact is to have an emotional charge that flips on a regular basis. And, you know, the more often you can do it and keep the viewer involved, the better off it gets. Not, you know, so crazy that it's just impossible to grab onto, but just often enough where the emotional values at stake change polarity, if you will. And so to illustrate this, it turns out the first act of Return of the Jedi is rather a masterclass in this regard. And that's particularly with an eye toward resolving how badly things went at the end of The Empire Strikes Back and how we can get back on the right track. The opening crawl immediately gives us a glimmer of hope that Luke is already on his way to rescue his friend Han from the grasp of the evil gangster Jabba the Hutt. So there is a positive right out of the gate. But we get a negative charge immediately when we first see 3PO and R2 heading to Jabba's palace and 3PO tells us that Lando and Chewbacca never returned from Jabba's palace. So already we know that maybe things aren't going as well as we had initially hoped when we were given that bit of it in the opening crawl. And then we get 3PO and R2 being delivered to Jabba the Hutt with a message where Luke is a Jedi Knight ready to bargain. Like, oh my gosh, he has actually progressed in his skills and now he's declaring himself a Jedi Knight to Jabba the Hutt. This is a good thing, right? A fully powerful Luke Skywalker could actually have some effect in dealing with Jabba the Hutt. But then... He decides he's gifting the droids to Jabba and they are turned into a torture pit where we actually see droids getting tortured for the first time. So suddenly we are flipped to a negative charge. Things do not look good for our droid heroes at this point. And then when Boosh shows up with Chewbacca, you actually get a little positive bump because 3PO clearly was wrong about Chewbacca's situation. He thought that Chewbacca had gone there and never came back. Well, clearly that's not the case, so 3PO has something wrong and is now no longer a narrator you can trust, basically. So the fact that he's worrying about these things, maybe it's not so bad. But then you get the negative of Chewbacca actually being sold to Jabba the Hutt and being thrown in prison. Then you get the positive bump of Boosh sneaking in in the middle of the night and freeing Han from the Carbonite, and the double positive bump of it turns out it's Leia, which is fantastic. But then you get the immediate negative 
of Jabba finding out. And not only has Han been thrown down into the dungeons, but Leia's been captured too. And you get a little bit of the edge taken off of that negative when Han and Chewie are reunited. And there's some indication that Luke is planning something, but we don't know what it is. But then you get the very positive bump of Luke actually showing up and he is powerful in the force. He's pushing Gamorrean guards aside, possibly force choking them, which is really ominous in its way. He's mind tricking Bib Fortuna. Fantastic, it's working, it's great, until you get the negative bump of him getting dropped through the trap door into the Ranker pit. And then you get the positive of him beating the Ranker, which is fantastic. And then you get the negative of him being sentenced to death in the Sarlacc pit along with Han and Chewie. And that's all leading up to the most dramatic moment of all, which incidentally our hopes get stirred just before things go really crazy because of the suspenseful music from John Williams and the meaningful looks between Lando and Luke and the nods and the salute to R2-D2, R2's little trap door opening on top of his head and you know something is going to happen. Luke takes his jump flips around and the music comes in triumphantly and suddenly that spark of hope that was starting to get kindled as we heard the John Williams music building up its suspense and everybody getting into position, it suddenly bursts. It's like the pilot light and suddenly bursting into flame. It's absolutely fantastic. It is a masterful manipulation of our hopes for these characters over the first 30 odd minutes of Return of the Jedi. And similar to how the first act of Return of the Jedi works to take our hopes from their lowest point when you know, things looked as bad as they could be at the end of The Empire Strikes Back to bring them up to the highest point where everybody is safe and saved. The exact opposite happens at the end of Act 2 of The Empire Strikes Back. It takes time to develop because, hey, that's what happens in the second act of a movie. It's the bigger chunk of the movie, right? And then you've got that last half hour to resolve everything. But by the end of the second act, you've got what you thought was a really good situation working for the Rebellion, turns out that it's really bad after all. And I think there is one demonstration of hope that stands head and shoulders above the rest of the acts in that third act. And that is Lando's recommendation to bring the Rebel fleet closer in to the Star Destroyers and engage them at point blank range. I mean, Admiral Ackbar is already ready to call the retreat once the Death Star starts firing on them. And their transmissions and signals have all been jammed, so they have no idea what's going down on Endor. For all they know, Luke and Leia and Han and Chewie and the rest of them could be dead, you know? Like, they have no clue whatsoever. And yet, two things for Lando. First of all, he says that Han will get that shield generator down and we've got to give him more time. And it's funny in light of the Emperor telling Luke that his faith in his friends is his weakness, right? Well, yeah, maybe not so much. But... Even if it turns out that Han is not able to get the shield generator down, Lando says we'll stand a better chance going up against the Star Destroyers than we will against that Death Star, and we may actually take some of them with us. Which is a remarkable sentiment because it's still an expression of hope even in the face of defeat, even in the face of failure, of loss. It's reframing the notion of what you can be hopeful for in the present moment instead of saying, well, if we can't win, then at least we can do this. And it's still acting from a hopeful place. It's something that really has to be foundational as an element of your personality to be able to look at it that way, especially in the heat of battle when something like this is going on. And as we all know, Luke's faith in his friends is rewarded, as is Lando's faith in his friends and everybody's faith in each other, basically. And things go as well as you could possibly hope by the end of the movie. Now, that personal note that I mentioned to you earlier on in the show, I'm going to share that with you after the break, which is coming right up here. So stay tuned. This episode is brought to you by Constant Contact, the premier email marketing solution for small businesses and organizations. I've used their service since 2003, and over the past decade and a half, I've watched them evolve, make the product simpler, more powerful, easy to use, and do everything that they can to help train people to use the product more effectively and for it to work with other forms of marketing like social media, for example. So. Check out sw7x7.com slash email to learn more about Constant Contact and start a free trial. Once again, that is sw7x7.com slash email for a free trial. 
welcome back. So quickly before I say this personal business, I would just hope that if you are checking the show out in a place that has ratings and review options, I hope you will consider doing that for the show. And if you want to help support me delivering this on a daily basis to people around the world, I hope you will consider doing that by checking out patreon.com slash SW7X7. So I saw Star Wars and Empire in theaters when I was a kid, but I have no memory of doing so. It's not until Return of the Jedi that I actually have a memory that I can still access of seeing it in the theater, what that experience was like in the theater. And whereas I would say The Empire Strikes Back is my favorite movie overall, not because of the, oh, you know, it's deeper, it's darker, or anything like that. It's just the opening sequence on Hoth. I just love every single thing about that sequence. But as far as Return of the Jedi goes, there's one moment in Return of the Jedi that just affects me like no other moment anywhere else in the franchise. And it is that moment on Jabba's sail barge when R2 launches the lightsaber and the fanfare comes up. Luke jumps off, grabs the diving board, flips back up, catches the lightsaber and flips it on. Like, I am getting like the hairs <laughs> rising on my arms just talking to you about it. There is no other moment that viscerally impacts me so much. Like, it's just incredible. Everything about that moment still hits me as hard as it did when it came out in theaters back in 1983. I'm, you know, if you, if there's any situation where you said to yourself, you know, what is your favorite movie on the sheer dint of, does it still cause an emotional reaction for you in any way, shape or form? even, you know, years and years and decades and decades after you first saw it, well, I think that's a great barometer by which you could measure a movie and its impact on you. It doesn't even have to be something that's considered a really good movie, you know, or on the AFI top 100 film list or something like that. But just, if a movie can do that to you and consistently do that to you for decades, then I think you've created a winner. And for me, Return of the Jedi, I know it doesn't necessarily always get the same love as Star Wars and Empire do as far as the original trilogy goes, but yeah, that moment is just absolutely precious to me and more so than anything else in I think pretty much the entire saga and even in Solo and Rogue One too. But anyway, there you go. So um, that's it for this episode of the Hope series and yeah, we'll be digging into the Phantom Menace on the next one next week. But for now, that's going to do it for today's episode and thank you so much for joining me for it as always and may the force be with you wherever in the world you may be. This podcast is not endorsed or sponsored yet by Lucasfilm Limited, Disney, or 20th Century Fox. It is intended for entertainment and information purposes only. Star Wars, the Star Wars logo, all names and pictures of Star Wars characters, vehicles, and any other related Star Wars items are registered trademarks and or copyrights of Lucasfilm Limited or their respective trademark and copyright holders. May the force be with them. All original content is copyright 2019 by Star Wars 7x7. We hope you love it.